Crackers, the one, the only... Crackers! Well, what do you know? That's me. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word... Secret word, boys. We'll fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is door. George Fenneman, who's supposed to try for the $2,500? Well, uh, just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young single people present tonight. And our studio audience selected um, Miss Nina Kramer, Mr. Clarence Allen. And here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. You're both single, eh? And we'd like to get married someday. <laughs> Miss uh, Nina, Ni is that the Nina. way you pronounce it? Nina? Mm -hmm. Oh. I used to know a tenor named Nina. <laughs> uh, where, are you, where are you from, Nina? I'm originally from Chicago. Uh-huh. How original were you in Chicago? <laughs> Nineteen years ago. Nineteen years ago? Then you've been here about two years, is that right? No, I've been here about ten years. Oh, you're not 29, are you? Now you've got me confused. No, I'm 19. You left Chicago 19 years ago and you're 19 years old? No, I was 19. How did you I come out? By bassinet? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you mind repeating that whole thing again? How old well, are you? I'm 19. 19? Yeah. How long uh, since you left Chicago? Oh, uh, about 10 years. Oh, I see. That would make you 14 years old. You can leave it at that. Okay, leave it. And uh, what's your hometown, uh, Sonny Boy? Clarence? I'm from Claremont, California. Claremont? Claremont. I thought that was in Oklahoma. Not the one in California. Probably not. And I guess the one in Oklahoma is not the same one that's in California. That's where Will Rogers comes from, you know. Oh, he does? Claremont, yeah. See, now you've learned something tonight. That'll cost you three dollars. <laughs> what, what is your age, Clarence? I'm 25. What kind of work do you do, Clarence? I'm a geologist. Don't change the subject. I asked you what kind of work. <laughs> well, a geologists are really doing a wonderful work these days. Now, what do they do? <laughs> oh, we study rocks, hunt for minerals, hunt for oil, hunt for anything valuable in the Earth's surface. You actually look for rocks, is that it? That's right. Just wanted to be sure, in this program, we never take anything for granted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Stop groaning, it's free, you know this. <laughs> Nobody forced you to come down here. I could have used all your tickets tonight. <laughs> now, as a mining engineer, what would you say is the most valuable mineral? I'd say coal. You would, huh? I hate to bring a girl a wedding ring made out of coal. <laughs> How about uranium? Do you ever look for that? Oh, yes, we look for uranium, although it's scarce enough around here, so normally it's only when we're looking for some other mineral as well. You mean if you want to find uranium, you have to look for something else? <laughs> well, that's what we do, yes. <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous. Why don't you start out looking for uranium? And then maybe you'd find coal. <laughs> Now, uh, Clarence, uh, you're a nice guy. I like you, and I want to see you and, and Nina well provided for in your married life. I'll tell you what you do. You give me a dollar, and I'll tell you where you can find uranium. Okay? No. I know where I can find uranium myself. Oh, you do, huh? I do, too, in the dictionary, and that's an old gag. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm a librarian. A librarian? Really? Is that so? I didn't realize librarians came this young. Oh, well, there are lots of young girls in libraries. Aren't you unusual? What's that? There are lots of young girls in libraries. Oh, is that so? <laughs> I guess I'll have to start reading again. I used to belong to the crook of the month. Is that... Uh... <laughs> now, what, what library do you work for? The Beverly Hills Public Library. Really? I, I live in Beverly Hills. I don't think I've been there. Where is it located? Well, it's in the city hall, uh, right next to the police station. Oh, well, I've been there, all right. On the other hand, maybe it was the library. 
as I recall, they booked me at the time. <laughs> now, let's see how well you work together as a team. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play, you bet your life, for a chance of $2,500. But first, there's something I want you to pay close attention to. It'll prove invaluable in your marriage. You selected animals and nursery rhymes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Eighteen. Eighteen. Sounds good. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. All right. What kind of a pet did old Mother Hubbard have? A dog. A dog is correct. <laughs> well, you're on your way. You have thirty-eight dollars. You remember you're going for twenty-five hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-eight are you going to bet on this one? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. <laughs> what ran after the farmer's wife? Three blind mice. Three blind mice, that's right. <laughs> I can say you are doing mighty well. You have seventy-four dollars. Seventy-four dollars. Here's your third question. How much are you gonna go for? Seventy? Seventy-three. Seventy-three. <laughs> what did Bo Peep tend? Sheep. Sheep is right. Sheep at half the price. <laughs> Keep it half the price. I guess there's nothing there. You have one hundred and forty-seven dollars. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to bet? One hundred and forty-seven. How does that say? Hey. How much have they got? One hundred and forty-seven is in the whole thing. Huh? Okay, whole okay. thing. Okay. Why did Tom the Piper son swipe? Pig. The pig okay. is right. <laughs> and you two wind up with a grand total of two hundred and ninety-four dollars. to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Major Crossley. His partner is a housewife from the audience, Mrs. Sylvia Sparks. Folks, come out here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Uh, say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Sylvia Sparks, uh, you're, you're the housewife, huh? Yes. You look like you could give off many sparks. Uh. <laughs> I used to wonder who was Sylvia. <laughs> Where are you from, Syl? New York. You from New York? Yes. Uh-huh. What does your husband do? He's a mechanical engineer at Norris Stamping and Manufacturing Company. And uh, Major Ross Crosley, uh, what is your hometown, Major? My home is uh, Columbus, Ohio. Are you married, Major? Yes, sir. Very much so. Did you volunteer or were you drafted? <laughs> Sir, I, I volunteered. Should have married the Army. After 20 years, the Army gives you a pension. <laughs> How long have you been married, Sylvia? Four months. Four months, eh? First time out? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say at the racetrack. It's good enough for me, eh? You've been married four months, eh? Now, how long have you been married, Major? Uh, I notice you have some decorations on. Is that from the marriage? Or? Uh, no, I've been the married. Distinguished service at home in the kitchen? Uh, no. Uh, Groucho, I've been married for uh, 13 years. Now, which branch of the service are you in? Uh, I'm in the quartermaster corps. Now, uh, what do you do as a quartermaster? Well, uh, we, uh supervise the procurement of uh, perishable foods for the armed forces. Well, like what, for example? Well, what kind like, of supplies uh, do you purchase? Uh, meats and dairy products and uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, eggs, butter. Uh, well, do you we, pay retail or wholesale prices? Well, we, we uh, pay wholesale prices. Uh, we can't afford to, to pay uh, retail prices because we buy in such large volumes. I buy in small quantities, and I can't afford to pay retail prices. <laughs> and when you buy in such large quantities, how do you know you're not getting stung? We uh, have everything inspected, uh, uh, Groucho. Uh, if we, uh, for example, if, if we buy meat, why, we have uh, the veterinarian inspect all of it. Well, and... Where do you buy your meat, Santa Anita? <laughs> We buy our meat in the manner, uh, as I just told you, from the packing houses and, and so forth. Now, suppose you buy a carload of strawberries. Do you turn the train over to see if the bad ones are on the bottom? 
Uh, no, we... Uh, well, how do you know that all the well, strawberries uh, are going to be good? We have, uh, we have inspectors uh, look at the strawberries. What are they? Are they on the bottom of the car? Well, they don't turn the whole bottom over, but they may pick a crate here and crate there, and, and sometimes they look on the bottom, too. Well, by the way, as a quartermaster, would you say the Army travels on its stomach? Yes, uh, definitely, yes. The Must be quite travels. a sight after a 20-mile hike. <laughs> All those soldiers soaking their tired stomachs in a bucket of warm water. <laughs> All right, now, suppose you're buying meat for your own home. Uh, what do you look for? You, you, Mrs. Sparks. The butcher. <laughs> well, that is, uh, there's one butcher I usually go to. Oh, you look at the butcher face, huh? I, I ask him... Mrs. Sparks, Uncle Sam needs you. If there were more women like you in the service, the army would stop traveling on the stomach. They'd get up on their toes and follow you. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about shopping tonight. Now, let's see if you two can win a little grocery money. You might win $2,500. Run you $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's offstage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer won $294. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select the George Washington as your subject. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 15. Let's make it 15. 15. 15? What is the name of George Washington's home? Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is correct. <laughs> and you're off with a start. You have $35. You'd have missed that major. You'd have been drummed out of the army. Huh? <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 35 are you going to go for? Oh, we'll go for 20. 20? Is that all right, Mrs. Yes. Fox? What's the first name of George Washington's wife? Martha. Martha is right. <laughs> You're now at $55. She said he had a lot of candy stores at one time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 55 are you going to bet? And we'll bet it all. You're going to bet the 55? <laughs> all right, where did Washington's army spend the bitter winter of 1777? Valley Forge. Valley Forge is right. You have $110. You got $110, and here's your last chance to beat the others. Now, how much are you going to bet? 90. 90, is that all right, um, Sylvia? In what state was George Washington born? Virginia. Virginia is correct. Put it down, Major. Okay. Sylvia, you did a fine job. There. And you wind up yep, with you a grand total. all through this thing. Now, you too, fellas. <laughs> you wind up with a grand total of $200, and thank you very much. Uh, Groucho, yeah? the uh, secret word is still door. Talk slow like it'll drag at this. All right. I uh, was going to say that we invited some girl swimmers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Norma Welts. Her partner is a sculptor, Mr. Yuka Salomunic. And here they are. Welcome, folks, from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Over here, Mr. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A girl swimmer and a sculptor, eh? Uh, Norma Welts, is, is that? That's right, uh -huh. Yucca Salomunich? That's right. That's a very famous name. I've often seen it in the menu at the Brown Derby. <laughs> You're some kind of an hors d'oeuvre, aren't you? Uh... No, I'm a sculptor. Uh, oh, a sculptor. Huh? Oh. That's quite a jump from hors d'oeuvres. Huh? How did you ever get a name like Yucca Salomunich? Just like you did. My parents give it to me. As far as I know, your parents didn't even know me. <laughs> now, what does your name mean in the Brown Day? I mean... Uh... It means Salt of Munich. It means what? Salt of Munich. Salt of Munich? That's right. Oh. Now, where are you from, Mr. Salomunich? I was born in Yugoslavia. Why did you come to California? Uh, my doctor advised me to get rid of my sinus trouble I have. And did you get rid of your sinus? He'd get worse than that. <laughs> You didn't get rid of your sinus? No. It's worse than before. Well, in that case, it's a good thing you came to California. At least you did get rid of your doctor. <laughs> could you could you sound off in Yugoslavian, uh, Yaka? Sure. Uh, I speak it very well, you know. Go ahead, say yes, something. Ti imash veoma dobru glavu. Oh, you're a southern uh, Yugoslavian. <laughs> Okay, I give up. What did you say? You have very interesting head. 
It's really nothing. As a matter of fact, it is nothing. I've seen better heads on a glass of beer. Are you married, Yuck? Yeah. I'll call you Yuck. We get familiar very swiftly on this show. You, you were married, uh, Yuck? Yeah. How'd, how'd you meet your wife? Well, she used to come to my classes, where I used to lecture in the sculpture, you know, on sculpture. Oh, you were a lecturer? Lecturing. Oh, a lecturer. Teaching. Oh, I don't hear very well. I, I don't either. <laughs> And how did you meet her? She was sitting in the audience? And yes, I was She was, was spellbound at your lecture? She was not spellbound, but uh, I kind of... Uh, she was attracted to me, you see, and uh, I kind of finally fall in love with her nose. You fell in love with her nose? That's right. Did she have it with her? Or? Yes. Particularly her left nostril. I'm you using. fell in love with her left nostril, huh? What was the matter with the right one? What happened? You uh, you walked up to her after the lecture? Yeah. And what did you say to her? I told her I like cute nose. Of no, course. this isn't your wife. You're a little... <laughs> now, Norma, that's a very pretty name, Norman. You're a Thank very you. pretty girl. Huh? Thank you. Have you always been this pretty? Well, I guess so. <laughs> You're a swimmer. Huh? Do you swim for a living? No, uh, I'm a low freshman at SC. What kind of course are you taking there? Three points of the starboard? <laughs> No, elementary education. Oh. How old, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen, huh? Are you being rushed by any of the fraternities at school? No, you mean sororities. Fraternities don't rush women. <laughs> Things have certainly changed since I went to school. We used to rush anything. <laughs> Mr. Salem Munich, haven't you got a nickname? Uh, what'll I call you? You don't want me to call you Yuck, huh? Call me Yuck or George. <laughs> I'll call you Yuck. I like it better, too. Let's talk about sculpturing. Uh, how, do, how did you acquire this skill? Well, first I was born. Well, then that's I went, reasonable, I believe. Then I went to a famous academy to study. And then? And then I became a sculptor. Well, how did you decide to become a sculptor? I kind of like it, appeal to my sense. I study uh, technical things about sculpture, history of art, and anatomy. Well, I've studied anatomy, but I doubt if I could ever be a sculptor. <laughs> However, I'm uh, told I'm a pretty good chiseler. <laughs> now, do you think that uh, Norma here would make a good statue? I think she would. Are you looking at her nostril, or are you just... <laughs> well, I'm looking at her uh, interesting head. She has a very fine proportion head. Very beautiful uh, nose. Steady there, Yuck. <laughs> now, when you see a beautiful woman, uh, what's the first thing an artist like yourself looks for? What a ridiculous look, question. I look at her eyes. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't throw me out of here. I, I, pardon me, I didn't hear what you said. I said, I look at the uh, eyes. You look at the eyes first? Yes. Yeah? Well, I can see I'd be a total loss as a sculptor. <laughs> uh, Norma, uh... Norma, close your eyes. Now, uh, uh, Yuck, you tell me the color of Norma's eyes. I don't know. I thought you just told me you always looked at a woman's eyes. Yeah, but I look at, uh, at her eyes, at the depth of her soul, of her emotion. <laughs> Beauty, inner beauty, you see what I mean? I know. Beauty is only skin deep, eh? And that's good enough for me. <laughs> Norma, you can open your eyes now. I put my mask back on. Now, Yuck, look into Norma's eyes and tell me, what does she look like inside? I think she has a very beautiful soul, no? <laughs> very fine expression, very depth. She's a okay. good person. I can okay. see it. I can you keep see looking it. on the inside, I'll keep looking on the outside. <laughs> now, Yuck, have you done any well-known people in bronze or stone? Yes. I did uh, oh. one of the President Roosevelt before President he died. Roosevelt? Well, you yes. must be very good, huh? I suppose. <laughs> I'll have more respect for you now. You did Roosevelt? Yes. 
And uh, how was he? Did he was he quiet when? It was very interesting. You see, during this uh, work, he asked me, he says, "What do you want me to do?" I told him to keep his mouth closed. You see. And uh, are you a Republican? <laughs> no. The next day, the newspaper misinterpreted my story, and they told him I told him to keep his mouth shut. Of course, I didn't. I just told him to keep his mouth closed because, as you know, when you work, you have to keep your mouth closed. You know. I uh, want to tell you that we're honored to have you here. I had no idea that you were such a talented sculptor. Thank you. I thought you were one of those cheap guys that stood on Atlantic City on the beach or something. <laughs> oh, Norma, what is your specialty as, as a swimmer? The uh, backstroke. The backstroke? Could, mm -hmm. could you give us uh, an example of the backstroke? Right here. Well, you. Why not? I'm going to be water. Uh... Wait a minute. That's enough. It's not enough, huh? No. Is there any water in the audience? <laughs> well, just get us a kind of a what they call a dry run. Okay. Quite fast, easy. The swim. And that's all you that's do? That's all you do, and kick your feet. Don't you do? Huh? Kick your feet. Well, do it and kick your feet at the same time. <laughs> Well, thanks to you two, I know all about swimming and sculpting, and if I ever decide to have my statue carved, I'll go jump in the lake. <laughs> well, let's see how well you make out in the quiz. You run your $20 and the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. Now, I can't tell you how much uh, our other couples won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer are still ahead with $294. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You selected international landmarks. Here's your first question. How much of the twenty are you going to risk? Uh, fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fifteen. In what country do you find the pyramids? In Egypt. Egypt is right. And you're off to a good start. You have thirty-five dollars. You got thirty-five dollars. Remember, you're going for two thousand five hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-five are you going to bet on this? Thirty. Okay. Thirty. Thirty. In what country do you find the Louvre? L-O-U-V-R-E. Louvre in France. In France is right. <laughs> now you have $65. $65. How much are you going to bet this time? You bet 60 Okay. 60 Yuck is a real chiseler. <laughs> in what country do you find the leaning tower? In Pisa, Italy. In Italy is the right. <laughs> now you climb to $125. $125 is your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to go for? 120, 125 is that. Yeah, let's put the whole, the whole business. Don't kiss her, y'all. Just talk <laughs> it over. Okay, 125 is that. Let's put 125, yeah. Okay. In what country do you find the Acropolis? In Greece. In Greece is right. <laughs> and you wind up with a grand total of $250. And that means the librarian and the geologist with $294 get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. All right, now we find out you've been hanging around these books all these years. We find out if you really know anything. Here we go for $2,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. If the President of the United States and the Vice President should both resign, who is next in line to succeed to the office of Chief Executive? The Secretary of State. Is the Chief Secretary of State or the Chief Justice? One answer between you. Talk it over. Talk it over. And we want one answer between you. All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? We'll say the Secretary of State. No, I, I'm sorry. According to law passed in 1947, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $3,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won how much? $294. $294 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Now, here he is, the one, the only... The same thousand dollars we had last week. For the first time in nine years, we had somebody up here who talked more than I did. 
And we ran out of time. And, George, you tell them what we decided to do. Well, uh, last week, week, Mrs. Uh... Not last meek. <laughs> That's how I feel. Last week, uh, Mrs. It's uh... Donald Meek. <laughs> last week, Mrs. Esther Bradley and her partner, Joe Egbert, uh, used up all our time. So uh, we asked the other couples on our show last week if they'd come back tonight. And they said they would to play You Bet Your Life. And so is Ms. Mrs. Bradley is here. Uh, Joe Egbert is here. And another partner that she picked up along the way, uh, uh, he's a... Um, he volunteered, I think. He's a sailor. Yeah. So uh, I guess they're all here now, and the show starts over just like a regular show, and we're going to play You Bet Your Life, and the one that wins the most money gets the chance at the $1,000 question. That's right. Now, if either of our couples tonight say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him an extra $100. And the word tonight is uh, door. All right, George, let's go now. <laughs> Mrs. Helen Swartz, Mr. Isaac Cashton are first, first Groucho. So folks, you come in, please, and meet... Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and you'll split a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Isaac Cashdan and Mrs. Helen Schwartz. Hmm? Mrs. Schwartz, may I call you Helen? Yes, Mr. Marx, you may, but oh. everybody calls me Mama. Well, if everybody calls you Mama, I don't want to be with the riffraff. I'll call you Mrs. Schwartz. <laughs> Where are you from, Mrs. Schwartz? Paraguay? Sooner or later, no. somebody's bound to be from Paraguay. On this I'm show. from Hungary. Uruguay? What? Huh? Hungry lotions. Oh, I'm from hunger too, but where are you from? <laughs> Hungry lotions. Hungry lotions? Lotions is the name Lushans. of the city. Oh, a city. I thought it was yes. something you got at the delicatessen. Huh? <laughs> what do you remember about this uh, obscure village? Not much. I was about six years old when I left there. Oh, that's about and, uh, uh, 35 oh. years ago, huh? Uh, yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> How did you meet your husband, Helen? I assume you have one. Yes, I do. I met him at the dance, Mr. Marx. Kazatsky? Uh, no, Chardash. Oh. I thought that was something you get in a delicatessen. <laughs> What's a Chardash? It's a Hungarian dance. Could you give us a sample of it? Surely, but uh, not alone. I couldn't. Would you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, I have no idea how you do this, but I'm certainly willing to try. What do you do? You Could you give us a Chardash over there, Judge? <laughs> Oh, we get acquainted fast up here. Huh? Now, let's see. Your name is Isaac Ashcan. No Groucho. It's Cashdan. Oh, you're a Japanese Cashdan. Is that it? Huh? Something like that. Sometimes what? they say cash down. Oh. That's when they want to get a laugh, I guess. Something huh? like that. <laughs> well, what is your claim to fame, Isaac? Well, almost everybody has. Are you a midget race driver? No, I'm a chess player. Chess? Are you a good player? My title is International Grandmaster. Well, that's very impressive. <laughs> now, what is an international grandmaster? Is that anything like a local shave master? <laughs> Not quite. That's the highest title you can get in chess besides the world's champion. Mm -hmm. There are just three of us in the United States, and I think something like 27 in the entire world. You must be pretty good, huh? Well, they sometimes say that. Oh. Doesn't frighten me in the least, Isaac. <laughs> I'll challenge you to a chess game any day of the week and bet you $500. Are you game? I'll tell you, Groucho, I just have to have a little time tonight. And if you're interested, I'll play a blindfold. <laughs> Why do you want to blindfold yourself? Don't you want to look at me? Well, I think I can play the game just about as well. You really think you could beat me blindfolded? I've played several people at the same time blindfolded and done pretty well, Groucho. Of course, you realize if you're blindfolded, I'm going to cheat. <laughs> well, they have referees when they do this. And if I have any choice in the referee, I'll make sure he watches you as carefully as he does me. It's pretty hard to cheat in chess because there are very standard international rules. And if you follow the rules, this is one game where you really can't cheat. If I can't cheat, forget it. <laughs> the only fun I have playing any game is cheating. Chess is a little over my head. Uh, well, actually, my chess is below my head, but I mean, <laughs> Could you give me a sample play? I mean, a simple one that Mrs. Schwartz and I would understand? Well, I'll give you a game of chess, which I think is fairly simple. White starts, plays pawn to king four. 
and black plays pawn to king four. And white goes bishop to bishop four, and black makes the same reply. And white goes queen to rook five. Black's answer is king knight to bishop three. And white plays queen takes pawn, checkmate, the game is over. And who has the $500? Mr. Schwartz, will you give him five hundred dollars for me? Huh? <laughs> well, I've heard you have to be a mathematical genius to be a good chess player. Is this true, or could a fellow like me take it up? Well, you don't have to be a mathematical genius or a wizard of any kind. You can be illiterate, uneducated, and still play a pretty good game of chess. Isaac, you've described me to a T. <laughs> Shake hands with the next world's champion, <laughs> and I'm still going to cheat. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz, what's your hobby? Uh, are you a chess player, or do you just prefer ice hockey? No, Mr. Marx. My hobby is movies. Movies? You just like some place to go to take your shoes off, is that it? <laughs> You're popcorn happy. That's right. What kind of pictures do you like? Musicals, dramas, westerns, or comedies? Oh, I don't care what they are, I don't get Stony Curtis is in them. <laughs> Well, that's the way I feel. I don't care what kind of a picture it is, as long as it doesn't have Tony Curtis in it. Oh, no. Well, why Tony Curtis, Mama? What's so fascinating about him? Oh, because he's just the handsomest man on, on this earth. He's yeah. so wonderful, and, and uh, when he, he's got talent, and those big blue eyes, and he's on the screen, you just can't help but you just lose yourself. <laughs> Aren't you a little old to be a Bobby Soxer? I should think you'd prefer someone more mature, like Clark Gable, or Bogart, or Freddie Bartholomew. <laughs> why, why Tony Curtis? Because I'm his mother. Re really? <laughs> well, no wonder your criticism is so impartial. <laughs> Does Tony come from a theatrical family? Well, his father was a, an actor in Budapest, Hungary. He, well, did you know this when you married him? Um, yes. Well, do you have any talent outside of uh, type sickery? No. I just used to sing a little bit, but uh, when... Uh, well, how much I... singing did you do? Were you on the stage? No, no, no. Mr. Marx. I just uh, once called my Tony through the window, called him to come in, and I can't a neighbor of ours heard me, and he, he came right over and he says, uh, sink. He said, and sink? Were you in sink. the river? <laughs> he told me to sink for him. Oh, who did this? Uh, a canter. Oh. Boy, that canter doesn't overlook a trick, does it? <laughs> well, you're a nice couple, and I hope you get married someday. <laughs> now, Mrs. Schwartz, I've kidded you about your son, but actually I know Tony. I've had yes. dinner with him in New York. He's a good actor. He's a cute guy, and he's one of the biggest box office draws in the whole movie industry. Thank you, sir. And you can be very proud of them. I presume you both know how to play your bet your life? Are you selected Len London, Paris, and Rome as your category? These are questions on the three major European capitals. Let's see you know what you know about them. Remember, the more the questions, the the harder it is. Have you ever played chess, George? <laughs> no, I... Uh... You have any knowledge of it at all? None whatsoever. Uh, I've yet to find any subject that you have any knowledge of. <laughs> All right, now, what do you want to start with? Uh, 10, 20, 50, to 100. Oh, the hundreds? The small sums are uh -huh. obviously easier than the big ones. 100. 100. Dollars. 100. There is a famous district of wharves and warehouses that is the residential area for the Chinese population of London. What is this district called? It's in London. I believe it's the East End, Groucho. No, it was a famous song written about it. That, 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 that's Limehouse. Well, you lost half your hundred, you still have fifty dollars. Now what are you going to go for? Should try for the ninety. Ninety? All right, Paris has two chief airports. One is Orly, O-R-L-Y. What is the name of the other one? Very famous in history. It's La Bourget. It's where Lindbergh landed. That's right. You now have $25. Oh, well, this is just awful for a chess champion. <laughs> you want to go for 80? Shall we try? 
Let's find Katie, all right. What is the name of the building formerly used as a place of imprisonment that now houses the crown jewels of England? It's the Tower of London. That's right, the Tower of London. $105. Now, 70 I guess we'll try for 70 It's your last chance to beat the other couples. On how many hills was Rome originally built? And I want the exact number. Seven hills. Seven? You must be an old dice shooter. Seven is right. <laughs> up with $175. Gotcha, Mrs. Rose Westlake and Mr. Miguel Pinnell are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Roger Marks. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Rose Westlake and Miguel Pinnell. Rose, where are you from? San Francisco. I was born there right a uh, few months before the earthquake. Earthquake? Mm-hmm. Fire, you mean, don't you? Well, it was both. But the oh. earthquake started it. Oh. Don't you ever go back to Frisco then? Oh, I like Frisco when I'm there. I like here when I'm there. I like every place when I'm there. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. Are you married, Rose? Uh, no, I'm a widow. Widow, huh? Have you thought about uh, getting married again? No, I, I have a one-track mind, and I, I've had the nesting urge so badly now, I just want to settle down and just feel like I belong someplace. You have a nesting age? Mm -hmm. Well, Rose, you're welcome to use my avocado tree any old time you want. <laughs> I only ask one thing of you. Don't cackle before seven in the morning. <laughs> now, Miguel Pinnell, eh? Where are you from, Miguel? Uh, I am from Nicaragua. Nicaragua? Yes, sir. Oh, that's a nice country around there. Whereabouts in Nicaragua? Well, uh, you know, I was born in Granada. It's a, a very small town. Granada's in Spain, isn't it? No, we have another Granada in Nicaragua. Oh. That's very nice to... Well, were you ever involved in one of the frequent revolutions? Oh, I was just a child then. Oh. Well, don't they have revolutions for children down there, too? <laughs> are, you, are you married, maybe? I'm engaged, you know. You're engaged? Yes. Huh? Well, uh, you mean your gay bachelor days are almost over? Don't you miss playing the field, Miguel? Oh, I have two or three girlfriends to go around with. I see. Yes. These are spares, huh? <laughs> you're engaged and you have three or four girlfriends? Yes, you know. You're a, you're a real scoundrel, Mago. <laughs> what has your fiancé got to say about your flitting from flower to flower? Oh, she doesn't know that. She's in Nicaragua. <laughs> like in the whole country. Well, you're a Central American Casanova, huh? Oh, you want to call it that? It's okay. <laughs> Well, when, when did you last see your beloved? Well, when I left Nicaragua three years ago. <laughs> Does she still remember you? I hope so. Well, we write each other once in a while, you know. <laughs> I knew Latins were great lovers, but uh, well, if your girl still remembers you after three years, you must be sensational. <laughs> you may be another Groucho Marx. <laughs> Major, what makes you think your girlfriend hasn't got four or five boyfriends in Nicaragua? She may also be flitting from flower to flower. Has that ever occurred to you? Uh, that's why you think, you know. She is very conservative and my sister is watching her for me. <laughs> well, if your sister is anything like you, I have only one question. Who's keeping an eye on your sister? Her husband. Her husband is keeping an eye on your girlfriend? On oh, my sister. Uh, my sister keep on a high. Oh, my girlfriend. Oh. Works perfectly. Well, what do you regard as perfect, I mean? You have her sitting home at night there? Or? Well, uh, she's planning to come over, over the United States, you know, to meet me and marry me. Oh. I mean, my girlfriend. That means you'll have to discard all these other... Uh... Yes, sir. You and say don't it. you regret that? I do regret it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you write to your sister and prevail upon your girlfriend to remain in Nicaragua? No, because uh, I have to get married someday, you know, so better sooner than later. <laughs> don't you think so? Well, you're uh, kind of conditioned to this now, huh? That's it. You say it. <laughs> well, where do you work, Romeo? I mean, Miguel. Uh... Romeo, well, your Romeo works at uh, Camp Hardware and Company. You work for a hardware company? Yes, huh? sir. Well, do you have any outside interests, uh, hobbies? Or oh, yes. Well, uh, I would like to be an actor, you know, and uh, taking lessons now. What have you learned about acting? Uh? Well, uh, we, have, we have had some uh, basics, you know, uh, very simple things that are very important. 
to, for acting. Basic? Uh, yeah, like a theater, how to stand right, you know, things like that. You had to learn the right and the wrong way to sit down? Yeah, both. So well, you can see the you, difference. Could you show us how you sit down? Well, no, I would like to try I'll give to... It you. George. Oh, I'll get a chair. George, bring out a chair. I've never seen a Central American sit down. I'd like to see... Ah, uh, you will sit. Now you, you sit in a chair. I may have been doing it all wrong all these years. Well, uh, it's a kind of close, you know. I'm going to go over there and then back and sit down. Okay, okay. well, you go over there, but come back again, huh? Oh, I will. Sure. Now you show us the correct way to sit down. Yes, you know, you come over here to sit down. And then, you know, you can use your hands naturally. Mm -hmm. And there you are. That's pretty good. You know, that's the correct way. Now show us the show us the incorrect way. Oh, the incorrect way can be done too many different ways. You know, you can come over here, sit down, like that. <laughs> Miguel, I predict in just a few short years you'll be getting an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Of course, I also predicted that Pittsburgh would win the World Series. <laughs> Uh, Rose, how do you feel standing this close to an eminent actor? Are you thrilled? Well, no. You see, I'm used to it. I've been in show business all my life. You've been in show business? Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. I should have realized you were in show business. You have that air about you. What did you do? Shakespeare, Moliere, Shaw, Chekhov? No, I'm Fifi, the sheep-headed girl on the side show. The sheep-headed girl? That's right. Well, Rose, you look perfectly normal to me. In fact, you look very good. In what way are you sheep headed? Are you fond of wool gathering? On the head. Huh? On the head. I don't understand this. Well, you see, I carried around this way. I never cut off my act. You see, I did cut off part of this. is rather unexpected, or I could probably do it better. Well, let me hold your hat. Maybe that. Oh, that's make it wonderful of you. I just love being whole things for me. Don't go away with it. No, oh, I say. Won't. Well, I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. When I was about three or four years old, my hair just started getting funny, and everybody said, oh, the little girl looks like a sheep, and all that sort of thing. So there's only two things to do. If you have something that's odd, you either conceal it or you reveal it. So I decided to cash in on it. Fate handed me a lemon. I made lemonade out of it, so I just turned myself into Fifi. <laughs> Well, what did you do in this act now that you got the hair like that? Well, first of all, the man would introduce me. He would say, now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the inimitable Fifi. Now, that's me. Now, my friends, I'm called Fifi, the sheep-headed girl. I'm sure you may look at me and know why. I was discovered living among the natives by a band of British surveyors, believing me to be a child that had been kidnapped by the natives or perhaps a child of missionaries that had perished in the jungle, or even perhaps a native of some race that never has been discovered. Maybe the reason so many explorers never came home. Okay, that's fine. Huh? Well, I certainly hope I never sit in back of you at a hair-raising movie. <laughs> you got a great act, Rose. But what do you do for an encore? For an encore, I could go into my dance. Oh, well, let's have that, too. You want to huh? get the joint pose? <laughs> what, what music do you use? What kind of music? Oh, some Hawaiian music. Some Hawaiian music, Jack, huh? <laughs> get in the act there, Michael. Well, I'm off to the South Seas in the morning. Well, you're certainly a couple of odd fellas, and I'd like to go on talking to you. Two. I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the odd fellas are meeting tonight, so let's play your bet your life. You both know how to play the game? Well, I've yeah. played some games. I don't know about this one. Well... This may be a little mild, Rose, but it won't take long. Huh? <laughs> now, you select the cities of foreign countries yes, sir. and your partners and one answer between you. I'll give you the name of two cities of a foreign country. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
<laughs> I'll give you the names of two cities of a foreign country, and you tell me the name of the country. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? 10, 20, 30, up to 100? About 50. 50? 50, yes. <laughs> All right, here are the cities. Valparaiso and Santiago. What is the country? Chile. Chile is right. We now have $150. Uh, 75. No, 70 or 80? Uh, 80, make it. 80? Mm-hmm. Here are the cities. Calgary and Windsor. What is the country? Uh, say again, please. Calgary and Windsor. Canada. Canada is correct. I have $230. Now, what are you going to go? Uh, make it $60. $60. $60. $60. Mm-hmm. Here are the cities. Auckland, A-U-C-K-L-A-N-D, and Wellington. You tell me the country. Australia. United States. Auckland and Wellington. Make the United States. No, it's New Zealand. New Zealand? You were close, Australia. But... You lost half of your 230, you now have $115. All right, now you still have something to go. Well, I'll make it 60 again. 60? No, mm-hmm. you've had, so you've failed on 60. I wouldn't try that again. <laughs> Although well, this time you'd probably know the answer. <laughs> okay, let's try. 40? No, I'd say 60. 70? 70, okay. You've had 60. 70, yeah? Uh-huh. Here are the cities, Bonn and Cologne, B-O-N-N and Cologne. Now, you tell me the country. Germany. Germany is right. Don't go any further. And you wind up with $185. And that means that in just one minute, Mrs. Esther Bradley and her partners, Joe Egbert and... Pat Hunt, who won $275 last week, are still high and get the chance at the $1,000 question. In our Groucho, here are Mrs. Esther Bradley, Mr. Joe Egbert, and Pat Hunt, all set for the $1,000 question. I'm right back in here. I'm I'm glad to see you again. We had a lot of fun last week, and I'm happy to see you finally get the chance at the big question. And, uh, Mr. Egbert, have you worked out a satisfactory way of uh, dividing the money with the sailor if you should win? Yes, Groucho, we've decided that we'll split it three ways. Well, I think that's very fair. You feel all right about this? Yes, sir. Uh, Well, uh, what would you do uh, with your share if you should win tonight? Uh, Well, with three children, Groucho. You have three children? Yes, sir. Oh, you don't have a a girl in every port, huh? All right, now let's go. (laughs) And uh, good luck to all of you. Now, here's the big question. We're going to go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single end of answer between you, so think carefully and please no help in the audience. On December 2nd, 1955, the American Federation of Labor and the Congress of Industrial Organizations merged into a single union. For $1,000, who was the first president of the AFL-CIO? Now, you can talk it over, the three of you. What is the answer you three have decided upon? Was, uh, pardon, was that the, uh, the president of this uh, current union? It's, yes, it's the president of the current union. Mm. What did you say before? Sound like better. No. It's, a, it's the president right at the present time. Yeah, well, what is it? Who is it? Uh, George Meany. George Meany is right. <laughs> And how much did they win in the quiz, George? Uh, $275. Here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. And many of them say the secret word. This uh, moth-eaten duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is food. Scram. <laughs> Out of <Arrivederci>. the <laughs> George, proceed. Well, Groucho, we have a couple of young single people for you tonight. And uh, their names are Miss Barbara Schmidt and Mr. Mario DeRay. So would you come in, please, folks, and meet... Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the South of Plymouth. <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Barbara Schmidt and Mario Dore Me uh, A. Uh, which one is Barbara? Oh, I am. That's, that's your Barbara. That's about the silliest question I guess I've ever asked on this show. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Barbara? I'm 18. 18, huh? A lovely age for a girl. In fact, it's a lovely age for a woman of 40. (laughs) 
Mr. You're not married, are you, Barbara? No, I'm not. You're not. Uh, are you engaged? No. Completely free agent? I'm completely <laughs> unattached. Is that so? Yes. You mean your zip is broken? <laughs> well, something's holding you together, and I, I wish it was me. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Heaven? Originally, I'm from Albany, New York. Albany, yeah? Uh... Yes. And now I live in Pasadena. Oh. Well, uh, tell me, do you go to school, or do you have a job, or are you self sus Sustaining or self-supporting or what? No, I go to school. I go to UCLA, and I'm majoring in English. Oh. Oh, that's pretty good. Do you speak it at all? Uh... <laughs> well, why did you come to California to learn English? Don't they uh, speak English in Albany? <laughs> yes, well, I prefer the climate here in California. Oh. You're Mario, is that your name? Mario. Yeah. Mario. You're not Mario Lanza, are you? No, I'm Mario Duray. Are you related to Mario Lanza? No, but Al Duray is my brother. He's related to Mario Lanza? No, he's my brother. Your brother is Aldo Ray? Yeah. Well, congratulations. You're very lucky. <laughs> now then, who is Aldo Ray? <laughs> he's a movie star. He's a movie star? Oh, yeah. movie star. The only movie star I know is Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> You're a pretty big brute, Mario, aren't you? I'm big, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised you don't play football. Why is it? Well, I do play football. I play for the University of Southern California. I play with the team. You play with USC? That's just what I said. I'm surprised you don't play football. <laughs> <laughs> you hate USC, uh, Bob? I don't hate it. No. But I'm for UCLA. Uh, so am I. <laughs> Oh, only in the last five minutes. Oh. <laughs> Up to now, I was a fan of Rutgers. <laughs> now, Barbara, I imagine life must be interesting for a pretty girl in college. I've never been a pretty girl in college, but uh, I'm only guessing. Now, I wasn't even a pretty girl in high school. <laughs> Does anything exciting ever happen to you, Barbara? The most exciting thing that ever happened to me was I was chosen the 1954 Rose Queen, Pasadena. Oh, you were Queen of the Roses, yes. eh? Oh, that's a very high honor. Congratulations. Thank well, you. Well, pretty tough competition. Yes, yeah. there was quite a bit. Well, enough. Let's get down to brass tacks. We've got enough of this historical stuff. For... Mario, will you marry this girl? <laughs> no, I can't. You can. I'm going steady right now. Well, call her up and tell her you're going to marry Barbara. She'll understand. Women are very understanding that way. Well, say, your girl must be quite a dish, Mario, if you'll turn down the Rose Queen for her. How did you meet your inner Marada? <laughs> well, I met her about two years ago at a dance, and I liked her, so a couple of weeks later I asked her out, and that's it. We've been going out ever since. You were so crazy about it. Why did you wait two weeks? Were you saving up a dime for the phone? <laughs> I was busy doing other things. Other things? <laughs> My boy, take it from an old hand on these matters. There are no other things. <laughs> well, where's this dazzler? Is she, is she out front here tonight? Is she no, she, no, she's in Pinole, California. That's about 400 miles north of L.A. And she she's 400 miles from here? Yeah. She's the secretary for the district attorney up there. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> you mean your girl is 400 miles away and you turn down a date with probably the most beautiful girl in America who is standing right next to you? I have to, I guess. <laughs> no choice. You know, that's like living in Las Vegas and going all the way to Cedar Rapids just to play bingo in a church bazaar. <laughs> Well, you're, you're an attractive couple, and Mario, if you're smart, you'll marry this girl as soon as she can support you. <laughs> I forgot to ask you one question. Do you have a fella? No. Or did I ask you? No, Why not? Well, I have many fellows. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, let's play your bachelor. <laughs> I had a fellow who wanted to meet you. It was me. <laughs> you both know the rules of this swindle? Uh, this game? <laughs> You selected the musical category. These are all top tunes of the last 20 years. And Fenneman, just keep looking right here. Huh? 
Okay, now what do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way to 100. 50? 70? 70? 70. Okay, this song is from the score of the musical Knickerbocker Holiday. Now you give me the title. <laughs> September song. September song is absolutely all right. Yeah. And you're off to a good start to have one hundred seventy dollars. Now, what are you going to take a fling at? Change of Sammy Kahn or eighty? Eighty? We'll go eighty. Eighty. Eighty dollars. Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein wrote this song about ten years ago. What's the name of it? Play it. <laughs> Let it snow, let it snow. That's right. Let it snow is right. <laughs> now I have $250. What are you going to go for now? 90. We'll go for 90. 90. This song was a big hit a few years ago. Let's see if you can identify it. Wish You Were Here. Wish You Were Here is right. $340. Last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? We'll go $100. $100. This song was written by Rogers and Hammerstein. What is the title of it? Play it, Jack. Hello, young lovers. Hello, young lovers. That's right. Now give them a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and you're lined up with $440. There goes that girl and the district attorney and everything else. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Clement dealer. <laughs> Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent us and we want to drive this car. Oh, what a thrill you're going to feel when you're behind the wheel. DeSoto is the smartest car, smartest of the smart cars. It's so stylish and now it's Groucho says. Let's drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. From every angle, from here, from here or from here. DeSoto is smart. DeSoto is the car that makes people stop and look. The car you'll be proud to have standing in front of your house. It's smart to own the smartest of the smart cars. Here is DeSoto's smart double cockpit instrument panel with a new flight control lever, convenient, but out of your way because it's used so seldom. And outside, accenting the forward look is the dramatic slash of color we call a color sweep. It's beautiful styling like this that makes the new DeSoto the smartest of the smart cars. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. Uh, Groucho, we have a man with an unusual occupation for you. He's Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. His partner is a housewife. She's Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet... Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich and Mr. Vain Lucius Cameron. A couple of pretty fancy monikers there. <laughs> Mariana, where are you from? I am originally from Czechoslovakia, and I came over France in Portugal to the United States. You came with a friend from Portugal to the United States? I came with my best friend, my husband. Your best friend is uh -huh. your husband? Uh-huh. Well, that may be true in Czechoslovakia, but... <laughs> Whereabouts behind the Iron Curtain did you come from? Prague, Czechoslovakia. Prague, huh? Mm -hmm. You were poor but Prague at the time, huh? <laughs> Could you give us some idea of your age, Mariana? I'd rather skip that question. You'd rather skip it? Well, skip around here and then give us your age. I heard once Luella Farden said that a girl who tells her age is liable to tell anything. Well, I expect to weigh many other things out of you before we go. You're uh, Jules Vane, Lucius Cameron. I huh? was named after Jules Vane. Is that right? Yes, and you're, you're he was named first, and I was named after. Yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> where are you from, Vine? I was born in Sioux City, Iowa. And oh, that's where all the lawyers come from, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know that. Well, the Sioux City, I imagine that's where. Oh, I see. Well, I spent three years in Iowa, three years in Kansas, and then spent most of my boyhood in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do? Gosh, well, I'm a hydrologist. You mean you eat only vegetables? <laughs> What's a, well, what a is hydrologist is a man who locates, or a woman who locates uh, underground liquids, oil or water. You mean like a bootlegger? <laughs> yes, if they're underground. Well, how do you how do you go about finding water? Well, I have instruments that I developed over a period of 32 years of locating, locating wells. So what makes this thing work? It uh, takes on a charge from the electrical aura around the body, and uh, this positive charge causes it to become attracted to the negative charge coming up by reflection from underground water. Well, you lost me quite some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever found any wells for people? Yes, sir. I've located thousands of them. I don't know how many thousands. Well, how, how much do you charge for finding water? A cent a gallon? Or? Well, the price ranges from $25 to $100 uh, per well or $100 a day flat rate. $100 a day? Yes, sir. Well, you must be finding water because you're certainly soaking somebody. That's huh? right. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is food. I'm sure you're familiar with this game. I don't have to explain yes, sir. it to you. What's it mean? This is a spelling quiz. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Spell it and then pronounce it. All right. What do you start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 70? 70. 70 suits me. 70 suits me, too. All right. Spell the word lieutenant, meaning an officer in military service. L-I-E-U-T-E-N-A-N-T. Right. This kid's from Czechoslovakia, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> now I have $170. Well, what are you going to go for? Well, I don't know. $80? $80 is you, okay? Right. Sure. Spell the word aluminum, meaning a light silver white metal. Metal. A-L-U-M-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-I-N-
I'm 21. 21, yes. and what's your hometown? Mineola, Texas. Mineola, Texas? Is there a town named Mineola? Yes, sir. Where does that near? Oh, it's about 80 miles east of Dallas. You, well, how far is that from Neiman Marcus? That is Neiman Marcus. Oh. Are you married? Yes. You are? Yes. Well, you're pretty young to be married, aren't you? I've been married six years. You were married when you were 15? Yes. Boy, they catch him early down there, yeah. don't they? Huh? No, I caught him early. Oh. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Most women are not. <laughs> Mr. Hall, uh, where are you from? Originally from Kansas. Born in Kansas. <laughs> well, you don't have to get angry about it. Are you? <laughs> kind of out there. This guy's trying to hypnotize me. Huh? Him any more questions. <laughs> Did you grow up on a farm in Kansas? <laughs> Did you grow up on a farm back there in Kansas? Sir? No, I left when I was ten years old. Uh-huh. Your name is Albert Hall? Yes. Well, that's in London. Isn't that where the musicians uh, play in the concerts? Oh, yes. Are you, uh, did you know that? Were yes. you named after that place? Evidently. I, I didn't select the name. Oh. <laughs> Do you think I had such a soft job up there? Huh? time I come down here without my blackjack. <laughs> Where did you go when you left the farm? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> what were you doing there? Well, I went to school there. And when I quit school, I got a job on the Nebraska State Journal as a printer's devil. <laughs> <laughs> Will you ask him the next question? <laughs> you were a printer's devil. Well, why did you get fired? Or maybe you weren't the type, huh? I didn't get fired. Oh. Al, are you married? Oh, yes. How long have you been married, Al? Forty-two years. Is your wife out here with you? Yes, she's in the audience. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, what sort of work have you been doing lately? Uh, well, homicide? I came to Seattle and I got a job on the Seattle You train. imagine if he doesn't win any money here, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> I'm leaving long before that. <laughs> you say you went to Seattle and you got a job on the paper? Seattle Times in the composing room. I see. <laughs> How long were you there? Fifteen <laughs> years. Maybe I can out frighten them. <laughs> Boy, would he fit in all of Dickens' stories, huh? <laughs> well, June, what kind of work do you do? I'm a messenger. I feel safe on asking you. <laughs> You're a messenger? Well, what do you do as a messenger? Do you deliver messages? No, I deliver blueprints and supplies and food or anything else to, to put the engineers want. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you said food, so you and Gargantua each get $50. <laughs> All right, all right, beat it, Doc. Now, who do you deliver these things to? To the engineers. Well, how are you dressed? Uh, do you wear this kind of an outfit? Oh, uh, well, yes. Skirts, blouses, sweaters. Uh -huh. You know, better be careful. You know, I know something about engineers. They all have plans of their own, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do these engineers... <laughs> Maybe 
I can charm him. <laughs> Mr. Hall, I am reluctant to do this, but let's get back to you. Uh... <laughs> what are you doing in Hollywood, and who are you frightening? <laughs> what are you doing here at present, Mr. Hall? Well, things got tough up in the mountains. No money. I came to Hollywood to find out how they make money. <laughs> well, how do they make money? Uh, I walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard. And I come to the conclusion that 50% of them there are on relief. <laughs> think the other 40% are going around to these banks and loan companies. There's three or four in every box. I think you've got something there. Now, have you decided on the type of work that you'd like to do in Hollywood? What would you like to do, Al, as long as you're out here now? You're not doing anything. Well, what you're doing there looks kind of soft. It is, but I don't want it to get around, that's all. Just, uh, I guess the jig is up. <laughs> well, Al, the thing is up for loose chatter. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first two couples are tied with $440. Uh, you both understand the rules of the game. Now, you select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Whatever you say. All right. How much? She says 100. 100. Okay. What country is separated by 1,000 miles of the Republic of India? Pakistan. Pakistan is right. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You now have $200. Now, just so that we don't have any confusion, on the next questions, consult before you answer, because he might have said something else. And you wouldn't have won the money. All right, what are you going to go for now? $90. Now, one answer. What great river is sacred to the Hindus? It empties into the Bay of Bengal. Ganges. Ganges is right. <laughs> All right, you now have $290. Uh, hey, you're pretty lucky to have a gal like that, would oh, you? Ain't I always been lucky all my life, Groucho. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Al. Now, what are you going to go for? 80. Yeah, yeah, that's... 80. The city of Buffalo, New York, is located on which of the Great Lakes? Erie. Lake Erie is right. What happened to that talk I gave you? Uh, you now have $370. Now, I... What are you going to go for? Yeah. This is your last chance to beat the other couple. Sure. $70. Yeah. $70. What is the largest city in Finland? It is also the capital. Now, one answer. Talk it over first. <laughs> Helsinki? That's right. Helsinki. <laughs> and you'll wind up with $440. And that means that all three I of our couples tonight... I get everybody married in this show if they're married or not. It doesn't make any <laughs> That means that all three of our couples tonight, in just one minute, will get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Everybody tie. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have a question for you, and it's a very important one. Is your car safe to drive? Can you see safely? Can you steer safely? Can you stop safely? Well, if you're not absolutely sure, take your car to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. You make certain your car is a safe car. You'll make an expert check of your brakes, tires, headlights, taillights, steering, and all other important safety features. He'll make sure your car is safe and dependable and tell you if you need any adjustments or repairs. And if you do, he'll make them quickly and at a reasonable cost. His technicians are specially trained and they use the very latest equipment and factory-approved methods. They'll make your car a safe car. From headlights that enable you to see clearly at night to taillights that enable other drivers to see you. Everything that's important to your safety will be put in tip-top condition. And it won't take long. In a short time, 
your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will make your car a safe car and at a reasonable cost. No matter what make of car you drive, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. Make sure your car is a safe car. Roger, here are the three couples all tied for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. We've given them a little slips of paper. They'll write down one answer between them, and uh, if they all get it right, we'll uh, split the money among all of them. For $2,000, what was the name of the famous English jurist whose commentaries are fundamental in any study of English law? All right, what are the answers? Mr. DeRay? Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doré's answer is nothing. June French and Al Hall's answer is nothing. Mariana Ehrlich and Vine Cameron's answer is also nothing. This one has got Hoyle, but that's wrong. It's Sir William Blackstone, a very famous name <coughs> in the history of jurisprudence. I'm sorry you all lost. That means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, they lost the big money, but they all did pretty well on the quiz, didn't they, George? Yes, all the way. Each, How much did they each win? Each couple won $440. Well, congratulations to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight and to both of you and to everybody else. Thank you. I'm surprised they don't throw me out of here. Pardon me, I didn't hear what you said. I said, I look at uh, eyes. You look at the eyes, please? Yes. Sir? Well, I can see I'd be a total loss as a sculptor. Uh, Norma, uh... Norma, close your eyes. Now, uh, uh, Yuck, you tell me the color of Norma's eyes. I don't know. I thought you just told me you always looked at a woman's eyes. Yeah, but I look at, uh, at her eyes, at the depth of her soul, of her emotion, of her beauty, inner beauty, you see what I mean? I know. Beauty is only skin deep, eh? And that's good enough for me. <laughs> Norma, you can open your eyes now. I put my mask back on. Now, Yuck, look into Norma's eyes and tell me, what does she look like inside? I think she has a very beautiful soul, no? <laughs> very fine expression, very depth. She's a okay. good person, I can okay. see it. I can you keep looking it. on the inside, I'll keep looking on the outside. <laughs> Now, oh, Yuck, have you done any well-known people in bronze or stone? Yes. I did uh, oh. one of the President Roosevelt before President he died. Roosevelt? Well, you yes. must be very good, huh? I suppose. <laughs> I'll have more respect for you now. You did Roosevelt? Yes. And uh, how was he? Did he, was he quiet when... It was very interesting. You see, during this uh, work, he asked me, he says, what do you want me to do? I told him to keep his mouth closed, you see. And... Uh, Are you a Republican? <laughs> no. <laughs> The next day, the newspaper misinterpreted my story, and they told him I told him to keep his mouth shut. Of course, I didn't. I just told him to keep his mouth closed, because, you know, when you work, you have to keep his mouth closed, you know? I uh, want to tell you that we're honored to have you here. I had no idea that you were such a talented sculptor. Thank you. I thought you were one of those cheap guys that stood on Atlantic City on the beach or something. <laughs> now, Norma, what is your specialty as, as a swimmer? The uh, backstroke. The backstroke? Could, mm -hmm. could you give us uh, an example of the backstroke? Right here. Well, you. Why not? I haven't got any water. Is it? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's enough. It's not enough, huh? No. Is there any water in the audience? <laughs> well, just, just, just get us a kind of a, what they call a dry run. Okay. <laughs> Like that, it's easy. To swim. And that's all you that's do? That's all you do, and kick your feet. Don't you do, huh? Kick your feet. Well, do it and kick your feet at the same time. <laughs> well, thanks to you two, I know all about swimming and sculpting, and if I ever decide to have my statue carved, I'll go jump in the lake. <laughs> well, let's see how well you make out in the quiz. You run your $20 and the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. Now, I can't tell you how much uh, our other couples won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer are still ahead with $294. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected international landmarks. 
Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to risk? Uh, $15, sir. $15? In what country do you find the pyramids? In Egypt. Egypt is right. And you're off to a good start. You have $35. You got $35. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 35 are you going to bet on this? 30 30 In what country do you find the Louvre? L-O-U-V-R-E. Louvre in France. In France is right. Now you have $65. $65. How much are you going to bet this time? You bet 60 Okay. 60 Yuck is a real chiseler. Isn't <laughs> in what country do you find the Leaning Tower? In Pisa, Italy. In Italy is the right. Now you've climbed to $125. $125 is your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to go for? $125 is that. Yeah, let's put the whole, the whole business. Don't down. kiss her, you Just talk it over. <laughs> okay, $125 is that. Let's put $125. Down. Okay. In what country do you find the Acropolis? In Greece. In Greece is right. <laughs> and you wind up with a grand surprise. <laughs> When you buy in such large quantities, how do you know you're not getting stung? We uh, have everything inspected, uh, uh, Groucho. Uh, if we, uh, for example, if, if we buy meat, why, we have uh, the veterinarian inspect all of it. Well, uh, where do you buy your meat, Santa Anita? <laughs> no, uh, we, we buy our meat in the manner, uh, as I just told you, from the packing houses and, and so forth. Now, suppose you buy a carload of strawberries. Do you turn the train over to see if the bad ones are on the bottom? Uh, no, we... Uh, well, how do you know that all the well, strawberries uh, are going to be good? We have, uh, we have inspectors uh, look at the strawberries. What and... are they? Are they on the bottom of the car? Well, uh, they don't turn the whole bottom over, but they may pick a crate here and crate there, and, and sometimes they look on the bottom, too. Well, by the way, as a quartermaster, would you say the army travels on its stomach? Yes, uh, definitely, yes. The Must army be quite travels... a sight after a 20-mile hike. <laughs> All those soldiers soaking their tired stomachs in a bucket of warm water. <laughs> All right, now, suppose you're buying meat for your own home. Uh, what do you look for? You, you, Mrs. Sparks. The butcher. <laughs> There's one butcher I usually go to. Oh, you look at the butcher face, huh? I ask him. Mrs. Sparks, Uncle Sam needs you. <laughs> if there were more women like you in the service, the army would stop traveling on the stomach. They'd get up on their toes and follow you. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about shopping tonight. Now, let's see if you two can win a little grocery money. You might win $2,500. Run you $20 into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman's off stage to remind our listeners. The librarian and the engineer won $294. Here we go. Let's see how high you can you $20. You select the George Washington as your subject. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 15. Let's make it 15. 15. 15? What is the name of George Washington's home? Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon is correct. <laughs> and you're off with a good start. You have $35. You'd have missed that major. You'd have been drummed out of the army. Yeah? Remember, you're going for two thousand five hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-five you going to go for? Oh, we will go for twenty. Twenty? Is that all right, Mrs. Yes. Sparks? What's the first name of George Washington's wife? Martha. Martha is right. <laughs> you're now at fifty-five dollars. She said he had a lot of candy stores at one time. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the fifty-five you going to bet? And we bet it all. You're going to bet the fifty-five. <laughs> All right, where did Washington's army spend the bitter winter of 1777? Valley Forge. Valley Forge is all right. Now you have $110. You got $110, and this is your last chance to beat the others. Now, how much are you going to bet? 90. 90, is that all right, um, Sylvia? In what state was George Washington born? Virginia. Virginia is correct. Put it down, Major. Okay. Sylvia, you did a fine job. And you wind up with a grand total. all through this thing. Now, you too, fellas. <laughs> you wind up with a grand total of $200, and thank you very much. Uh, Groucho, yeah? the uh, secret word is still door. Talk slow, like it'll drag at this. All right. I uh, was going to say that we invited some girl swimmers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Norma Welts. Her partner is a sculptor, Mr. Yuka Salomunic. And here they are. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dailers. 
Over here, Mr. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. A girl swimmer and a sculptor, eh? Uh, Norma Wells, is, is that? That's right, huh? Yucca Salomunich? That's right. That's a very famous name. I've often seen it in the menu at the Brown Derby. <laughs> You're some kind of an hors d'oeuvre, aren't you? Uh... No, I'm a sculptor. Uh, oh, a sculptor. Huh? Oh. That's quite a jump from hors d'oeuvres. Huh? How did you ever get a name like Yucca Salomunich? Just like you did. My parents give it to me. As far as I know, your parents didn't even know me. <laughs> now, what does your name mean in the Brown Day? I mean, uh... Now, what, what library do you work for? The Beverly Hills Public Library. Really? I, I live in Beverly Hills. I don't think I've been there. Uh... Where is it located? Well, it's in the City Hall, uh, right next to the police station. <laughs> well, I've been there, all right. On the other hand, maybe it was the library. As I recall, they booked me at the time. <laughs> now, let's see how well you work together as a team. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play, you bet your life, for a chance of $2,500. But first, there's something I want you to pay close attention to. It'll prove invaluable in your marriage. $20, you selected animals and nursery rhymes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Thank you. Eighteen. Sounds Eighteen. good. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. All right. What kind of a pet did old Mother Hubbard have? A dog. A dog is correct. <laughs> well, you're on your way. You have thirty-eight dollars. So you remember, you're going for twenty-five hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-eight are you going to bet on this one? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. <laughs> what ran after the farmer's wife? Three blind mice. Three blind mice. That's right. <laughs> $74. $74. Here's your third question. How much are you going to go for? 70 73 73 <laughs> What did Bo Peep tend? Sheep. Sheep is right. Sheep at half the price. Sheep at half the price. I guess there's nothing there. You have $147. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? 147 How does that say? Hey. How much have they got? Sure. 147 is in the whole thing. Huh? Okay, whole okay. thing. Okay. Why did Tom the Piper son swipe? Pig. The pig, pig is right. <laughs> and you two wind up with a grand total of $294. We're the officers for the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Major Crossley. His partner is a housewife from the audience. Mrs. Sylvia Sparks. Folks, come out here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Uh, say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Sylvia Sparks, uh, you're, you're the housewife, huh? Yes. You look like you could give off many sparks. Uh. <laughs> I used to wonder who was Sylvia. <laughs> Where are you from, Syl? New York. <laughs> You from New York? Yes. Uh-huh. What does your husband do? He's a mechanical engineer at Norris Stamping and Manufacturing Company. And uh, Major Ross Crosley, uh, what is your hometown, Major? My home is uh, Columbus, Ohio. Are you married, Major? Yes, sir. Very much so. Did you volunteer or were you drafted? <laughs> sir, I, I volunteered. Should have married the Army. After 20 years, the Army gives you a pension. <laughs> How long have you been married, Sylvia? Four months. Four months, huh? Eh? First time out? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say at the racetrack. It's good enough for me, huh? Eh? Been married four months, huh? Eh? Now, how long have you been married, Major? Uh, I notice you have some decorations on. Is that from the marriage? Or... Uh, no, I've been Distinguished married. Distinguished service at home in the kitchen? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, Groucho, I've been married for, uh, 13 years. Now, which branch of the service are you in? Uh, I'm in the Quartermaster Corps. Now, uh, what do you do as a Quartermaster? Well, uh, we, uh, supervise the procurement of, uh, perishable foods for the armed forces. 
Well, like what, for example? Well, what kind like of supplies uh, and uh, meats and dairy products and uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, eggs, butter. Uh, well, do you we, pay retail or wholesale prices? Well, we we uh, pay wholesale prices. Uh, we can't afford to to pay uh, retail prices because we buy in such large volumes. I buy in small quantities, and I can't afford to pay retail. Is the one, the only. Well, what do you know? That's me. Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word... <laughs> the secret word, boys, will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is door. George Fenneman, who's supposed to try for the $2,500? Well, uh, just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young single people present tonight. And our studio audience selected um, Miss Nina Kramer, Mr. Clarence Allen. And here they are. Folks, come on in here and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. You're both single, eh? And we'd like to get married someday, yeah. Miss uh, Nina, is that the way Nina. you pronounce it? Nina? Mm -hmm. Oh, I used to know a tenor named Nina. Uh, where, are you, where are you from, Nina? I'm originally from Chicago. Uh-huh. How originally were you in Chicago? 19 years ago. 19 years ago? Then you've been here about two years, is that right? No, I've been here about 10 years. Oh, you're not 29, are you? Now you've got me confused. No, I'm 19. You left Chicago 19 years ago and you're 19 years old? No, I was 19. How did you I come out? By bassinet? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you mind repeating that whole thing again? How old well, are you? I'm 19. 19? Yes. How long uh, since you left Chicago? Oh, uh, about 10 years. Oh, I see. That would make you 14 years old. You can leave it at that. Okay, leave it. And uh, what's your hometown, uh, Sonny Boy? Clarence? I'm from Claremont, California. Claremont? Claremont. I thought that was in Oklahoma. Not the one in California. Probably not. <laughs> and I guess the one in Oklahoma is not the same one that's in California. That's where Will Rogers comes from, you know. Oh, he does? Claremont. See, now you've learned something tonight. That'll cost you $3. <laughs> what, is, what is your age, Clarence? I'm 25. What kind of work do you do, Clarence? I'm a geologist. Don't change the subject. I asked you what kind of work. <laughs> well, a geologist are really doing a wonderful work these days. Now, what do they do? <laughs> oh, we study rocks, hunt for minerals, hunt for oil, hunt for anything valuable in the Earth's surface. You actually look for rocks, is that it? That's right. Just wanted to be sure in this program, we never take anything for granted, you know. <laughs> Stop groaning, it's free, you know this. <laughs> Nobody forced you to come down here. Today. I could have used all your tickets tonight. <laughs> now, as a mining engineer, what would you say is the most valuable mineral? I'd say coal. You would, huh? I hate to bring a girl a wedding ring made out of coal. <laughs> How about uranium? Do you ever look for that? Oh, yes, we look for uranium, although it's scarce enough around here, so normally it's only when we're looking for some other mineral as well. You mean if you want to find uranium, you have to look for something else? <laughs> well, that's what we do, yes. <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous. Why don't you start out looking for uranium? And then maybe you'd find coal. <laughs> Now, Clarence, hey, you're a nice guy. I like you, and I want to see you and, and Nina well provided for in your married life. I'll tell you what you do. You give me a dollar, and I'll tell you where you can find uranium. Okay? No. I know where I can find uranium myself. Oh, you do, huh? I do, too, in the dictionary, and that's an old gag. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm a librarian. A librarian? Really? Is that so? I didn't realize librarians came this young. Oh, well, there are lots of young girls in libraries. Aren't you unusual? What's that? There are lots of young girls in libraries. Oh, is that so? <laughs> I guess I'll have to start reading again. 
I used to belong to the crook of the month. Is that... Uh... It means salt of Munich. It means what? Salt of Munich. Salt of Munich? That's right. Oh. Now, where are you from, Mr. Salomunich? I was born in Yugoslavia. Why did you come to California? Uh, my doctor advised me to get rid of my sinus trouble I have. And did you get rid of your sinus? He got worse than that. You say you didn't get rid of your sinus? No. It's worse than before. Well, in that case, it's a good thing you came to California. At least you did get rid of your doctor. Could you, could you sound off in Yugoslavian, uh, Yaka? Sure. Uh, I speak it very well, you know. Go ahead, say you something. Ti imaš veoma dobru glavu. Oh, you're a southern uh, Yugoslavian. <laughs> okay, I give up. What did you say? You have very interesting head. <laughs> it's really nothing. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it is nothing. I've seen better heads on a glass of beer. Are you married, Yuck? Yeah. I'll call you Yuck. We get familiar very swiftly on this show. You, you were married, uh, Yuck? Yeah. How'd, how'd you meet your wife? Well, she used to come to my classes, where I used to lecture in the sculpturing, you know, on sculpturing. Oh, you were a lecturer? Lecturing. Oh, a lecturer. Teaching. Oh, I don't hear very well. I... I don't either. And how did you meet her? She was sitting in the audience? And yes, I She was, was spellbound at your lecture? She was not spellbound, but uh, I kind of... Uh, she was attracted to me, you see, and uh, I kind of fallen, fall in love with her nose. You fell in love with her nose? That's right. Did she have it with her? Yes. Particularly her left nostril. I'm you fell in love with her left nostril. Huh? <laughs> what was the matter with the right one? <laughs> and what happened? You uh, you walked up to her after the lecture? Yeah. And what did you say to her? I told her I like you nose. Of no, course. this isn't your wife. You're a little... <laughs> now, Norma, that's a very pretty name, Norman. You're a Thank very you. pretty girl. Huh? Thank you. Have you always been this pretty? Well, I guess so. <laughs> You're a swimmer. Do you swim for a living? No, uh, I'm a low freshman at SC. What kind of course are you taking there? Three points of the starboard? No, elementary education. Oh. How old, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen, huh? Are you being rushed by any of the fraternities at school? No, you mean sororities. Fraternities don't rush women. <laughs> Things have certainly changed since I went to school. We used to rush anything. <laughs> Mr. Salomunic, haven't you got a nickname? Uh, what'll I call you? You don't want me to call you Yuck, huh? Call me Yuck or George. <laughs> I'll call you Yuck. I like it better, too. Let's talk about sculpturing. Uh, how, do, how did you acquire this skill? Well, first I was born. <laughs> Well, then that's I reasonable went. to believe. Then I went to a famous academy to study. And then? And then I became a sculptor. Well, how did you decide to become a sculptor? I kind of like it, appeal to my sense. I study uh, technical things about sculpture, history of art, and anatomy. Well, I've studied anatomy, but I doubt if I could ever be a sculptor. <laughs> However, I'm uh, told I'm a pretty good chiseler. <laughs> Now, do you think that uh, Norma here would make a good statue? I think she would. Are you looking at her nostril, or are you just... <laughs> well, I look at her uh, interesting head. She has a very fine proportion head. Very beautiful uh, nose. Steady there, Yuck. <laughs> now, when you see a beautiful woman, uh, what's the first thing an artist like yourself looks for? What a ridiculous I look, question. I look at her eyes. <laughs> 